Hey everyone, my name is Vicki Lowe and I work at Homer High School on the Kenai Peninsula. And I'm going to have uh, take a little bit of time here to explain to you how I went from some of the old science standards to some of the new ones. And so I will show you uh, where to find the new standards and then I'll give you some tools that you could use to kind of mimic my process. So I want to begin by telling you a little bit about the new standards. They were developed as a student-centered approach to science instruction to engage students and facilitate educators to engage in a new way of looking at science in their classrooms. They are based on the framework from K-12 Science Education published by the National Academies Press. Now let's get started. You may be asking yourself, where, I do, where do I begin? And so you wanna to get to the state of Alaska science standards and they're pretty easy to find if you just punch that into the search bar but ultimately you want to get to this page and on this page here you can see that you have a couple of options for opening up those documents and checking out the standards I suggest you begin there um, and then there's some information on how to actually read the standards. And this is somewhat involved. I've spent a lot of time doing this myself, but there are some resources for you, including videos at the bottom where many of your colleagues around the state have uh, broken apart the standards for better understanding. So here's a peek at one of the standards now. This is, um, I'm just going to give you an idea of what we're looking at. And so basically, instead of having a GLE, a grade level expectation, now we have a performance expectation. And that is a really active statement about what students should be able to do after this material has been presented to them. Um, actually, it's not presented to them. It's a, an opportunity for them to explore the standard and to really learn by doing. So to make that happen, you see that there are three big uh, foundation boxes here. And the first one are the science and engineering practices. Um, those are really the doing of these standards. And the core ideas are um, the things we're most familiar with that we maybe in the past have asked students to basically memorize. And then the last part are cross-cutting concepts. And these are these are basically ways of thinking, and they're not limited just to science. They're found in mathematics and um, really all over. So here's the basic anatomy of the standard. And again, I want to encourage you to spend a little mo bit more time understanding them, and then um, you can better understand the process I'm going to take you through if you're not there yet. So um, let's proceed. You want to go back to the state website. And there, you're going to find the educator's toolbox. And this is where I'm going to begin. So in the educator's toolbox, there are several important and valuable tools for you. All of the foundational boxes are broken down, and um, there's descriptions of how to incorporate phenomena into your, your activities and your lessons. But the one I'm going to focus on today is the crosswalk, how to get from the GLEs, which are the former standards, to the new science standards for Alaska. So let's go ahead and take a peek at those. So when you open up the document, there's quite a large table of contents. And um, I want to remind you that this should allow us to reformat our lessons to the new standards. We shouldn't really have to redo everything. We're going to take the best parts of our old lessons and make them even better. And so I'm a um, biology teacher, and I teach ninth graders. I see most of the ninth graders in Homer High School. And I wanted to focus on a DNA standard. And I know that um, I could find them in the GLEs from grade nine. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the crosswalk looks like for this particular standard or uh, the GLE that I want to focus on and move over to the new SSA. So um, as you can see, uh, we have for this one GLE, there are three new science standards. So the old to the new. And so when I look at the new standard, I see that I have the performance expectation code. So that's valuable information for me. 
So from here, I'm going to go get a, a better look at what these standards look like in the new standard science standards for Alaska. So I'm going to go back to that state website, and I'm going to open up the documents. Now, I'm not actually going to do that here because it's really, really big, but I am going to pull out the ones that I underlined a moment ago. So the first one is HSLS1, and there you can see that the performance expectation is for students to construct an explanation based on evidence for how the structure of DNA determines the structure of proteins which carry out the essential functions of life through systems of specialized cells. And embedded in that statement are these three um, foundation boxes. Now here's the second standard. Students will be able to ask questions to clarify relationships about the role of DNA and chromosomes, encoding the instructions for characteristic traits passed from parents to offsprings. And sorry, offspring. And so again, you see these foundation boxes and they're all woven up into that standard. So now that we have these two standards, I'm going to just focus on uh, one of them, and I'm going to show you some great resources for what I think makes this process a little bit easier. So what I like to do is to take that standard, that performance expectation, and plug it into the search bar of my computer. And when, you, when I do that, look at all of the resources that show up. I have an NGSS site that I could take a peek at. Down at the bottom, um, I have an NSTA site, but one of my favorite ones is right here. This is the Wonder of Science, and um, it's hosted by Paul Anderson, who many of you may be familiar with from Bozeman Science. So I'm going to open up, um, show you some of the resources here. And the first thing I like to do is see what Paul's, uh, what the Wonder of Science site has done to that particular standard. So here's the first one. And I'll tell you why I really like it. I like the color coding that shows me where the foundation boxes come in. This is really helpful for me to make sure that I'm going through each part of the standard. Now, there's another really great um, part of this site which helps with planning, and it's the resources site. So let's take a peek at what that looks like. All right, here we go. So when you open up unit planning, there are a lot of things that you can choose from. And I've spent some time exploring this, and I've decided to use um, the 3D story storyline unit design. And so this is a Google Doc, and you can share it, which I've done. And so I would begin by putting in my information. I'm calling it the central dogma, and this is going to be for biology 2. Uh, my name is Vicki Lowe, and I'm intending for this to take about six 90-minute blocks. Okay, the next part of this document asks you to state your desired results, and you're going to do that by plugging in the performance expectations and my anchoring phenomena. The big event that I want to tie all of this around is going to be the mRNA COVID vaccine. It's something that's very relevant. Um, Alaska is doing a fine job of rolling out the vaccine, and it's even available to teenagers, and they're really starting to be curious about what this is and if they have a choice in uh, how they're going to if they're going to be able to voice their opinion to their parents or caregivers about whether or not they're going to receive it. So they have had quite a lot of questions. So that's what I'm going to anchor this lesson around. I do have some enduring understandings and essential questions that I want to hit. And then the next uh, part of this process is to start outlining my assessments and my learning plan. So my assessments are going to be both uh, formative and summative, and I'm going to be looking at can they uh, recognize the, the role of the double helix? Can they transcribe and translate proteins? I'm going to have a traditional quiz, and I'm going to have them create an mRNA vaccine. So stage three is to um, set up your learning plan. So for me, the first thing I wanted to do 
was to have students understand DNA structure. So I went ahead and um, created a, a semi-performance expectation um, and adaptation that is a very active way of looking at what I want them to do. So I want them to construct a model illustri illustrating the structural organization of the DNA molecule. And I've gone ahead and written why this is important and how, um, how they will learn this. And so it's important because they will see the helical structure of DNA and create a paper model to understand the um, molecular structure. And then we're going to use that information to move forward in protein synthesis. And so um, how are they going to do this? The students are going to weave double helix models and submit images through their LMS um, with paper models and a legend. And so let me show you what that looked like. I started out by giving students instruction with some basic string on how to begin weaving. Now, I had never done this before. It really didn't have a place in my um, curriculum. But now this, this, the new science standards are more active. And I thought it would be a great way to bring the double helix structure to them with this kinesthetic activity. Uh, I was delighted to see that my students were so excited to actually just get weaving. After um, many months on the computer, they were really thrilled to just get their hands in there and start doing something. And as you can see, uh, we have a really nice helical structure that students are going to be wearing on their, um, their wrists. They've, they've got some on their backpacks. And they have a reminder now and an actual experience creating a double helix. And so this is the assignment that I had them sign, uh, send in to me. They took a picture of their helix, and then we have a detailed uh, paper model of DNA, complete with the uh, directionality, the appropriate number of hydrogen bonds per basis, et cetera. So that was my first part. My second part of this lesson was to build proteins. And this is an adaptation of a pretty class classic exercise in uh, transcription and translation. And so again, you see the adaptation of this activity into a very active statement, that what the purpose is and how they're going to show me. So I'll just go through this one quickly. Um, basically, I had a, uh, a nine different traits, uh, sort of, nine different components. And I wanted the students to flip a coin to determine which DNA sequence they had to work with. So after they flipped the coin, um, they would fill out the chart based on which one they got. And here's an example of what that looks like. Of course, this is for both of them, um, but each student would only have one of them. And as you can see, the student had to decode the DNA to mRNA and um, then to tRNA and finally to the amino acid sequence. Now, from the amino acid sequence, my students uh, had to determine which component structure they would get. And so I've just carried over uh, one of the sequences from um, the previous activity. And so if we match it up, met Ella Gly stop, we can see that this student would be responsible for component 1A. Uh, and so what I did with this activity was to create these little components. And down at the bottom, you can see 1A. And you can see that they're all a little bit different. And so again, they had to do this for nine different traits. So they got a lot of practice uh, transcribing and translating. But then they got a little map. And they cut out their nine pieces. And according to this map, they built this little protein. And so this ended up being really fun too. And with two classes doing this, I ended up with quite a variety of uh, different proteins. And these proteins, um, interestingly, I had only two. Well, it's not, it's pretty amazing. I had two that were the same. And so I ended up having a classroom full of these little structures. And the students really had a great time being active, and they could actually see how subtle differences in the code uh, related to big changes in the shape of what we were calling the protein. 
All right. So that was pretty fun. And here's the last part of my activity. Um, I wanted them to make a vaccine. And so my active statement is that students would construct an explanation based on the evidence of how structure of DNA determines the structure of proteins, which carry out the essential function of life through the systems of specialized cells. And so um, we definitely covered the DNA piece, but with an mRNA vaccine, I wanted them to recognize that it was also that nucleic acid that could code for the protein. And so um, let me show you how I did this. Okay, I made this virus for the students, and hopefully you can recognize some of the shapes there. I didn't actually have one of my students create one of these uh, orange spike proteins. It just didn't come up. But the challenge was for them then to look at the structure, and you could probably see that it follows these components, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, built upon each other. And then the task for the students was to sort of backwards engineer. So based on the structure of my fictional spike protein, they should have been able to, well, they were able to pick out which components this protein was made of. And then they went backwards to reverse engineer the mRNA. And this is what would then be put into their vaccine. Well, I want to thank you for viewing this video. Please check out the channel for more videos on the science standards of Alaska and other educational topics. For more information about the science standards for Alaska, including resources, planning guides, and tools, please visit the Department of Education and Early Development Standards webpage. And here's the address there.